Well, I think it is, yeah. actually. I think it is. Um, you know, uh, you'd probably want to know precisely where the legality of the, the issue stood. And, mm. yeah. Yeah. Hi, Simon. I know we're running out of time and um, we're on to something else in a moment, but I just wanted to um, get your impression of the vote count tonight in terms of the Dunedin electorates, especially the party vote. Because we've done this. We've done this. Yeah. Um, we, we, what's, have done, we have done that. I, yeah. my, my take on it, and I'm, I don't profess to be a, mm. a huge expert in these matters, yeah. but my take is simply that... Um, there has been, uh, it, it, to a certain extent, it mirrors the national yeah. situation, mm. and yeah. there has been obviously a considerable yeah. swing to to yeah. national, and um, yeah. and yeah, I think uh, that's largely it. Yeah. But yeah. it also, yeah. I think, also mirrors the fact that yeah. you know Labour has not, for whatever reason, um, done very well. Yeah. Yeah. And while personalities and people might mm. be you know, associated with the electorates and voted in, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of people who, um, mm. are beyond that, uh, are not convinced necessarily. Mm. Well, I will point out for those uh, who are... Um, well, it might be Joe Stockman. Joke, but I'll just very quickly point out that uh, we are live streaming through the ODT website as well as the New Zealand yes. Herald website, which is very pleasing for us as the university to have that connection with the local media so yeah. we do thank you for that and we'll just jump to joe and we'll say thank you very much yes. simon for coming Thanks, and talking. Simon. thank you very much cheers uh, so joe welcome back to vote chat we're talking to joe stockman who's the um editor of the critic magazine here at university of otago also a uh, politics uh, student um, one of bryce's underlings minions yeah. call them what you want uh joe where are you tell us what you're doing Joe Bryce, I've made my way across town. I've, I've left Epsom and Parnell, and I'm now down on the Viaduct, down at Nikki K HQ. Uh, it's a pretty lively atmosphere here. They're a little bit more picked up than the national people, and it definitely seems to be that uh, Sauvignon Blanc is the drink of choice. <laughs> it's obviously pretty close down here still. The, uh, the TV still has uh, Nikki at 300 points up, but interesting, the Nats have got the internal projections up on the screen. They're pretty confident. They think they're going to be up by 900 by the end of the night. It's right. definitely a really different vibe than the act party. It's definitely <laughs> the young and the beautiful that are uh, that are out here supporting Nikki. She's not here yet. She is apparently on her way, uh, but she uh, she sounds relatively confident that she uh, that she is going to be making it in. The big surprise of the night around here by the national voters is definitely Winston Peters. They are very very surprised how well he's done, and there's a little bit of uh, kind of umming and ahhing about what it's going to mean for National to go with the Maori Party in coalition. All right, that's interesting. So the I mean, in is because, well, I mean, the Maori Party have said they will not do asset sales. The National Party's main, well, one of the main planks was, you know, we will do asset sales. How do you reckon they're going to make those two things work? Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one, and there's a little bit of talk about that going on. I think uh, what, what will have to happen is uh, there's going to have to be, obviously, some bottom lines laid down, and I think the Maori Party will give on that one. I don't think they're going to... Uh, I don't think they're going to go into a formal coalition, but I think they, they will at least uh, give confidence and supply uh, and allow the asset sales to go ahead, uh, especially with National being in such a strong position. Yeah, well, this is the thing. I mean, even if National falls short of a overall majority and the, the uh, party vote is down to about 48% now, 49%, uh, mm. you know, it's so close to an overall majority, it's going to be hard from a almost like a moral perspective to not give them what they want. Mm. Exactly, and the Maori Party have said that they will sit down with the Nats first. They will give them the uh, the moral prerogatives, if you if you want to call it that, that they will sit down with the largest party and go into coalition talks with them first. The interesting thing which is going around the crowd here is the discussion about tactical voting. Mm. And with all of the complaints about uh, tactical voting from the left and Epsom, <laughs> people here are saying that in Orphan Central it does seem that the Greens have tactically supported Jacinda Ardern. <laughs> uh, the uh, the Act Party was up around 13 14%. And it's, uh, they're definitely, uh, Denise has definitely thrown her support behind, uh, behind Jacinda. Interestingly, I just talked to, uh, to Holly Walker, who's down in Wellington at the uh, provincial uh, Green Party HQ down there. Uh, there's a, a sense of cautious excitement, apparently, amongst the Greens. They're pretty happy with their 10%, and mm. it seems they think that it's going to trend up a little bit. There's a bit of a festival atmosphere. There's apparently standing room only. Um, I asked. Holly, how she felt that uh, tomorrow morning she might wake up as one of the newest and youngest members of parliament in New Zealand. She said it felt very surreal and that she didn't want to jinx it yet uh, and that it was weird to even think about it. But hopefully for Holly, we'll be seeing her next year in parliament. Absolutely. Well, you know, critic editors do go on to do great things. So, yeah. you know, there you are. 
Well, we can only hope, right? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, down in the viaduct, there's lots and lots of people. How would you compare it to the uh, final of the Rugby World Cup? Similar atmosphere? Well, uh, no, to be totally honest. It <laughs> seems like most people are just getting on with their day-to-day life. Uh, even the crowd here at, uh, at KHQ, it's really only about 50 to 60 people. Uh, I think the, uh, it's been strategically located that Nicky can probably make your way across the Sky Sea, right. which is where, of course, uh, Prime Minister Key will be arriving later on tonight. Yep. No doubt to make some form of, uh, of victory speech. Uh, the crowd even seems to be thinning out a little bit. Maybe people are just going off to get drinks before, uh, before Nicky arrives. But right. down on the right act itself, it's, it's all pretty quiet. All right, so do you think New Zealanders only have one party in them a year? I think that's definitely it. I think they're probably a little bit exhausted. But then again, I don't think it's, you know, it's not really much of a party. It's, uh, I think sure. people were projecting that National was going to come in about this, uh, about this amount. Yeah. It's, not really, it's not a change of government. It's not the beginning of a new government. No. Uh, so it's more just kind of, uh, kind of routine up here in Auckland. Right, very good. So where are you off to now on your travels? What's the next port of call? Uh, next stop is uh, we'll probably wait around here for Nikki to turn up, and if she doesn't uh, do so shortly, we're going to head up to Pontivy uh, for the Ardern Campaign HQ. Uh, and then the next stop is Roscoe to go and uh, see what Mr. Goff has got to say about this evening's affairs. Very good. Well, Bryce, you any questions for Joe? No, we'll get back to you soon. Um, yeah, I think yep. that covers we'll, it all. We'll come back to you uh, once, at least once again before the uh, night ends. So uh, thanks very much for your updates, Joe. We appreciate it. All right, thanks a lot, Bryce. Take care. Bye. Okay. Well, it looks like things are kind of going as expected. Um, Auckland Central, the incumbents there. Sure. Um, I think she's going to hold on. Mm. Um, Epsom, it looks like Banks is holding on. Let's give, well, us, we'll, the, we'll, give us the results there and we'll... And, oh, first, Ohario. Um, yep. Peter, Peter Dunn looks like he's comfortably um, yep, about searching ahead. Votes, yep, um, on 60, yep. So, yes, he's... He wouldn't be unhappy there. Okay. Epsom it seems as, as as if Banks is far enough ahead um, at this stage. Yeah. To almost yeah. call it for him, I think. He's pulling out. He's yeah. pulling out yeah. in the front. So I expected it might go switch. the other way, but no. No, no, no. no. Um, and what's interesting is looking at some of the party vote mm-hmm. in, in various parts of the country. So we already talked about Dunedin and the sure. fact that... Well, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, just, just on this, I mean, let, let's look at Epsom right there. Oh, yeah. Go back to Epsom, yep. if we may. Yes. Yeah. I mean, look at that. 498 party votes, votes for Act. Act. Yeah. And 8,000 uh, electorate votes for John Banks. Yeah. I mean, that does tell a story about not only Act's strength across New Zealand, yeah. or Act's weakness across New Zealand, I think, but also, you know, that, that's a one-off result. It's a one-off. That people have done what they're told. And people vote split. That's quite right. A huge amount of vote splitting right. going on. Yep. One of the reasons people, I think, have kept MMP. Perhaps. That's mm. right. Okay. Um, as I was saying, the... The party, but well, there is a lot of vote splitting going on. So mm-hmm. here in Dunedin, sure. um, the the land, Labour candidate's going to uh, win. Yep. But um, it seems that National has won the party vote in Dunedin South, well, let's which take a is look quite that, considerable. So uh, you know, and that's just unheard of to have. Yeah, um, that's right. Yep. So National Claire Curran, twelve thousand one hundred and forty-five yeah, for her uh, electorate yep. vote. She's comfortably ahead of Joanne Hayes. That's but right. But still, you know, Joe Hayes' first ever yeah. campaign there. She won't be unhappy with so, that. I'm, She's done surprisingly well. Yep, and that yeah. National Party, though, 10,276 uh, for the party vote, ahead of Labour, 8,766. So I think the Labour Party will be asking a lot of questions after today about um, what's happened in Dunedin. Well, that's... that's yep, that's... That, that, well, let's flick to Dunedin North and we'll get the full... OK. Of course, we've had the um, replacement for Pete Hodgson. Uh, David Clark. David Clark, and it's always expected that a new um, candidate Absolutely. won't do as well as the incumbent. Uh, it's still comfortably hit but there. Way ahead. Yep. Um, but if you look at the party vote, we're seeing that, um, what is it? Uh, Labour has, has 8,400. Um, Nash- National 7,900, so only 500 ahead yeah. on the party vote in Dunedin Which, North. Which, again, is, is kind of interesting. Yeah. But Wigram, even more interesting in my view. Um, obviously, you can imagine the Labour candidate has um, taken over Jim mm-hmm. Anderson's uh, role and won that easily. But the party vote, if you look at that, National's got 10,000 party votes to Labour's 7,000. Gosh. Um, so mm. I think that shows how there is still a bit of a blue surge mm. Mm. happening in yeah. the country, even in what yeah. used to be seen as... Um, yeah. Very much red electorates. One last, while we're looking at the electorates and we're looking at this national label, let's just check out what's happened in Waimakariri. Yes, good question. Uh, this was a, one that was tipped as being um, one that Labour could lose. Um, 
And it's too close to call. It's right down to the wire. Clayton Cosgrove, he is behind on the count, um, but it's 300, 400 votes in it. Ooh, um, but it, it, it is getting close to the end. It's getting close, yeah. but I mean, with 400 votes, yeah. it's still going to come right down, not only to tonight, but down to specials, I suspect. But that's a very interesting... Um, um, it's a very interesting uh, result, that, because, I mean, Clayton Cosgrove, this is earthquake country, really. This yeah. is, you know, you've got the quake ravaged areas and then mm. Rangiora which is where a lot of people have fled too so you know there's been lots a, of interesting uh, things going on lots exactly. of factors and it's been a hard one to pick for that very, very Clayton reason. Cosgrove was it was revealed on uh, one of the blog sites um, campaigning without labour uh, appearing at all on his billboards he had, right. his, he had, his, so, camp, he had his sign up Clayton Cosgrove White yeah. Macquarie red sign but no labour logo which is an interesting that's right you know exactly what he was trying to do there. Uh, the very last one, let's try uh, to have a little look and see what's happening in West Coast Tasman. Again. Oh, yes. Um, okay, looking at West Coast Tasman. Um, Damon O'Connor is ahead. Yeah, right. Labour looked to win that electorate, although, again, looking at the party vote, unsurprisingly, National yeah. well ahead on the party so vote. Damien O'Connor, he didn't run on the list, the That's Labour right. list. So he so, had to win this if he was going to get back into Parliament. That's and, right. And, you know, he's campaigned as a local boy. I think he's campaigned on local issues to a large extent. Mm. Um, and he's romped back through. Interestingly, he was given a very high profile in Labour's uh, opening yeah, announcement. That's it's right. opening um, party uh, on, uh, announcement on TV. Um, and, you know, it's, obviously he's got a lot of uh, popular support. Yeah, so he speaks to a certain part of the Labour Party but, audience. Yeah. Um, that I think the Labour Party would do well to um, to use people like O'Connor to mm. well, especially to hold on to. He, he speaks to a uh, large part of the um, the uh, the uh, West Coast there, obviously. Yeah. Well, we're going to bring back in at this point a couple of our earlier guests. We're going to bring back uh, James Mager and uh, Meager, sorry, yep. <laughs> Ashley Murchison. Uh, what are you guys seeing? What are you thinking? It's all I've been pretty predictable at the moment. Mm -hmm. There's no real surprises, perhaps. I think looking at the local electorates, um, having a Dunedin focus mm -hmm. here, Dunedin North and Dunedin South, I think the margins there are probably some of the surprises for us. Mm -hmm. Because um, they've gone down, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. the margins um, between the Labour and National candidates are looking to decrease quite a bit. Um, the National Party vote, as you guys would have mentioned, has mm -hmm. gone up in Dunedin South, which mm -hmm. is surprising. I think that shows the strength of the National Party campaign machine and um, those electorates throughout this election. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's one of two things that are happening in Dunedin. Um, either Labour are leaking a lot of votes to the Greens, and I see Matilda Tude has already gotten more votes mm. this year than she did last year, with about 94% of the Dean mm. North vote counted. Mm. And secondly is that the National team have run a very, very strong uh, campaign in Dunedin, both Dunedin North and Dunedin South, over the past two months perhaps. On the other hand, the Labour campaign has been, I think, probably not as visible. Perhaps they've done more door knocking or more pamphlet dropping, but it definitely hasn't been as vigorous and enthusiastic as it has been in the past. And perhaps that's to do with the makeup of their support teams this time. National has a lot more youth coming through now, and I think Labour is starting to have that drop off. I think one of the big things too is the fact that obviously Pete Hodgson and Dunedin North being the incumbent for so long obviously has greater name recognition, there's more certainty around his candidacy, who he is, what he stands for yeah. and you can't guarantee that that support is going to transfer over to a new candidate. So while yeah. they might maintain that party vote, there's no guarantee that they're going to retain that candidate vote when David Clark yeah. is quite an unknown in mm. Dunedin North. So. Okay. But he has run a fairly good campaign hasn't he, um, David Clark? And he, in some ways, he's a he's a very slick um, and polished performer. I've seen him campaigning, and he speaks well. Yep, I think he's run a consistent campaign. It's been safe. It's been yeah. um, quite quite well done. But I think he probably doesn't have quite the experience behind him and um, the organisation behind him that someone like Pete did. Pete Hodgson was a great organiser. Yeah. And in electorates like Dunedin North that are so heavily reliant on the Labour vote, a big part comes down to the day on how many people you can actually get to the booths. OK, so thinking ahead for Labour in particular, um, is David Clark going to be the sort of person that will rise to the top? Like Pete Hodgson, you know, he played a very important role in um, the, really the leadership, the wider strategic leadership of the Labour 
the party. Is, what, what's David Clark's future likely to be within the party? Oh, I think people are expecting him to um, to go to do quite well in the political party. Um, he's got some good experience and good community networks behind him, so there is the potential for that. Um, I don't think he quite has necessarily the charisma behind him that a lot of the other younger candidates like Jacinda Ardern, mm -hmm. um, even Grant Robertson have. So, yep. I mean, he's, he's really contending in the party against some quite good candidates. OK, because the future really is at stake at the moment with mm. the Labour Party, and you know, so it's interesting to talk about who are going to be the faces. Mm. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it's more interesting for Dunedin South, the fact mm. that mm. Claire Curran is the incumbent, she's mm. been there for three years now, and Jo Hayes um, isn't a local. She mm. comes from her... her she, um, is back to this area, but she has come down from the Wairarapa. Yeah. Her husband is still up there. She's been in Dunedin South for about mm -hmm. five months. She's moved here, yeah. but she has made so, such an immediate impact and has slashed Curran's majority in half that I think in three years' time, should Joe still be around, that's a, probably a very big threat to mm -hmm. Curran, and she might need to start focusing on Dunedin South. So she was quite more. a wise pick, do you think, by a national in that electorate? So, yes. Um, but, I mean, it was quite interesting that they chose a woman, they chose a Māori woman to fight against uh, uh, Claire Curran. Um, it seems to have gone quite well because, I mean, you wouldn't have ever expected National to actually win the seat, but it seems like she's really cut that majority. Um, yes, and, and of course on top of all that, Jo herself is a very impressive candidate in her own right. Yeah. Um, she's fitted in very well down in Dunedin South. She has, she's out in Mosgiel, so she yeah. has... Um, different connections than what mm. Claire Curran obviously does. Yeah. And she has been getting engaged in the community a lot since she's been here. So I think give her three years to build on those connections in Dunedin and you might see, I mean, if the party vote's looking like it's going Nationals' way, then you may see a, a, a total flip around in three years' time. And she's a good campaigner. She's done well to engage things like the youth sector mm. here in Dunedin and I think that's, that's quite an important thing to do about having those people out there spreading the message on your behalf when you can't be in every place at once, and she's done a really good job of sort of mobilising that support around her, particularly for a new candidate. OK. Now, Labour at the moment have got about 26.5%. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it will go up as some of those big urban um, yeah. booths get counted. Um, but in the end, it's going to be something like 27%. Um, that means we're going to lose some Labour MPs, doesn't it, from Parliament? Some of the list yep. MPs? Yeah, and, and you're going to lose some of the ones that featured probably in their opening address. Yeah. I yeah. think if Carmel Cipollone doesn't mm. take Waitakere, yeah. she might be on the cusp. Yeah. I yeah. think Stuart Nash, Stuart Nash might um, be on the cusp. Deborah Mahuta yep. Coyle on the yeah. cusp. Yeah. So and these are people who have been in here in, in Parliament and have been working hard. Hard. And they're people who have proven themselves. I think um, the unfortunate thing is that perhaps those people needed higher list rankings because I think they actually have a lot to contribute okay. to the Labour Party. But I will just mention um, in Waitakere, Cipollone is well in the lead to beat Paula Bennett, which will be one of the more interesting upsets of the, just, um, the night. Yeah, just on that, we had a look at that before and we found, we saw that Sue Bradford has made no impact in Waitakere at all. Mm. Um, I think Mana, they have 51 party votes. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah. And I think her own personal electorate votes might be around 50 or 100. 109, yeah. yeah so mm. I, don't, I think they definitely haven't had the, well, the danger of the split vote that was warned of by yeah. Labour and secondly the impact that Mana would have voted for. Uh, yeah, hasn't eventuated. OK, so Phil Goff has had quite a good campaign. Um, he's been um, widely sort of um, yeah, um, praised for um, growing in the role in just the last few weeks. He had a very you know, kind of wooden nature for a lot of the year, but then suddenly became a lot more dynamic. Um, I think everyone's just assumed that they will, um, that, that Labour will get rid of Goff after yeah. tonight, yeah. Um, especially yeah. as the results will be about 27%. Yeah. Do you think that's a foregone conclusion? Or? Most likely. I mean, Goff came in as the underdog in this campaign, so really, I mean, even just remotely being able to campaign competently and come across competent <laughs> was essentially going to, yeah. um, to work in his favour. Yeah. So and he, he, he didn't that. perform yeah. badly, he's performed yeah. above and beyond our expectations. I would be surprised if he remained as leader of the Labour Party. I don't think it's going to be something that's going to be resolved tonight. I don't think he's going to stand no. up there and no. do a Helen Clark no. and step down. I think. Um, but you don't, you don't think he might try and do the Helen Clark of 1996, where by she had a, a bad result. They got what 28 percent of the vote, a similar sort of vote, mm -hmm. and she stuck stuck round and became prime minister three years later. And that election campaign was 
the, the proving of her mm. and um, gave her that base to then um, fight back. Any I chance think it's that unlikely. Happening? I think it's highly unlikely, um, especially given sort of the rumours about other people vying for the leadership. Okay, the what's your pick? Party. My pick probably, I mean, it's, it's pretty predictable. It's pro- most likely going to be Cunliffe or Parker. I'd like to see someone like David Shearer, yep. personally. I'll I go think. Shearer. Yep. I think Cunliffe, over the past few weeks, has mm. perhaps done a few things and sort of revealed Which a bit about himself that no one had seen it. before. Mm. His comments on Judith Collins, and I think mm. the other day he was out um, yelling on a megaphone. Yeah. Um, and I think Shearer has a lot broader support of many people mm. in the party, but who knows? I mean, Goff could could easily turn around and fight hard for his his job, essentially, yeah. because I can't see Phil Goff sticking around in the opposition benches for three more years, to be honest. OK. Well, thanks for that. That's really insightful stuff. And uh, thanks for coming in. And I think we're going to start talking about... Well, we're going to talk to Hone Harawera first and maybe a video clip first, So um, because he appeared um, in a vote chat here uh, a couple of months ago. So let's see that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah no, 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 um, no. You're, sure. you're but, everywhere. But, but, I also happen to know that if I wanted to, uh, by this evening, I could be on uh, on mm. the, f- the first item on the six o'clock news just by saying something right here and now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> please, please, please. No, we'll try. Go ahead. But, yeah. <laughs> Come on. No, no. But right now, I just don't need that sort of thing. I'm just focusing on on helping to build branches all around the. And what does he say? Okay, right. so that was Hone Hara we were here a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. or a few months ago, mm-hmm. and he was one of the more interesting campaigners. Mm-hmm. We're hoping to get him on sure. the line soon, um, speaking from his electorate. Um, I think he had a fascinating campaign, mm-hmm. partly because of the fact that he sort of surprised us all by being a bit more serious and mm-hmm. almost statesperson-like yeah. at times. Yeah, well, the... Consensus seemed to be that he won the debates he was in. Like, yeah. you know, those debate, those minor party debates, yeah. he came out of it looking, you know, the best. And this, this was a consensus amongst people who I don't think are well disposed to like him in the that's first right, place. That's right. That's uh, right. So his critics were saying nice things about absolutely. him. Yeah. Um, you know, I, he does seem to have taken on a leadership mantle, which yeah. has always been the question. You know, could mm. Hone the Firebrand actually morph into Hone the, the serious leader, uh, which is going to be the, you know, that's the test for him really. Uh, the other interesting thing I think is that what could he have pulled off had he just been absolutely certain about Tita Tokarau? Yeah. Know, because as I think we've said, he did have to pull back and really focus on that recently. It seems to have worked. He's you know about 800 votes ahead there. I see on the most yeah. uh, on the on the po- on the the most count, but. It did mean he wasn't able to do the stomping around the country, the you know the the waving of the uh, the banner and so on. And so you know that that whether that's cost mana second seat, that that'll be an interesting question. I, I think that's a good way of putting it mm. because uh, it's been um, a bit, lot quieter mana than we expected. I sure. think. Um, uh, uh, on the plus side for them, it's allowed some of the other candidates a bigger voice. So sure. we've heard perhaps a bit more from Sue Bradford, uh, mm-hmm. for example, than we might have expected otherwise. Yes, um, mainly about the Greens, though, which is probably yeah. not where she should be treading. That, but yeah. That's right. So um, she's been um, yeah, giving her critiques of the Greens. Sure. Um, and it looks like we might have the phone call coming soon. So... Um, It'll be interesting to ask him about why mm. he's suddenly gone so moderate and... Um, moderate, 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 moderate. I think that's um, a hard word. Yeah, you know, it's hard to... Where, how has he managed to bring the gravitas? Yeah. You know, how has he managed to bring such gravitas on? And is it his, his, his mind? Is is it Matt McCartan uh, saying the right things in his ears? That's right. what I, I want to know. Great. Okay. Kiora, is that Hone Harawera? It is. Oh, hi. It's, it's Bryce Edwards and Andrew Giddis here at the University of Otago. Thanks for joining us. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. No problem. And, no problem at all. And uh, congratulations. You seem to be well ahead in the latest count. Uh, I don't worry too much about that, bro. We just, we just keep plugging on until it's all over with. Very good. Until I get a call. Um, <laughs> you, you must be a bit disappointed, though, with the MANA party vote at the moment. It's slower than some people expected. It is, but... Um, I guess the reality is that we were up against it, given that we had no money at all. We had, mm. no, yeah. had no major sponsors. We had no government money. Mm. So we were really up against it in terms of ad campaigns, in terms of billboards. And it was just down to trying to get the word out as much as possible by word of mouth. 
uh, banging the streets and knocking the doors. OK. Now, some people have said that you've gone a bit quiet in this campaign and maybe a bit moderate, that they haven't seen the old firebrand Hone Harawera. What's your response to that? Well, um, one of the things when I was at the Māori Party, every time a tough decision had to be made, my mates kept sliding backwards. So <laughs> I, felt, I found myself having to push forward and, and fight harder every single time. But when, I'm, when I've got a crew like myself, Annette Sykes, John Minto and Sue Bradford, now I'm surrounded by people as good as, if not better, than me on a whole range of issues. So I don't feel the need to go out to be sparking, sparking up every single day on every single issue. Mm. So with the result, that, sorry, this is Andrew Geddes uh, down here at Otago as well. With the results in uh, the Te Tatakarao, you know, you're, you are ahead, you're waiting for that phone call. When that phone call comes, you'll know that it's yours. Will that be a base for mana to then build on, to, to go on in the next parliament? Uh, the, whole, the whole focus of mana, mm. even before this election, was to put most of our energy into building the movement. Yes. Um, and into maintaining our role as activists, both inside and outside of the House. It just looks like I may be the only activist inside the House at the moment. Mm. But, you know, I've got a lot of faith in people like Annette and, and John, and Tu and Kiriama and a whole range of the others to keep pushing issues. Like, for example, um, we have a, a number of our members actively engaged in the Occupy Aotearoa, mm. uh, Aotearoa campaign, involved in the, um, the GI housing uh, campaign and other campaigns. Those will continue because Mana wants to be seen clearly as the voice of the poor and the dispossessed. And if that's the case, then our, our, our battleground will be the street for the mm. next few years and with me raising issues as much as I can in Parliament. OK, so what's your relationship likely to be with the Māori Party after this? Because in the past you've talked about the possibility of perhaps eventually getting back together again. Any chance of that? Uh, it's, it's difficult. I mean, they came out um, yesterday to say that if they're in a power position, their first call is going to be to national. Yeah. Um, you know, we made a very clear signal that we want to be, we are essentially the voice of the poor and the dispossessed. Mm. Unfortunately for us, we've chosen that group who don't actually go out and vote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But be that as it may, you can't be the voice of the poor and the dispossessed if you are going to be hanging out with National and Act. So if that's who the Māori Party is going to be, I think it's going to be difficult. Mm. I think their future is also kind of difficult in that, although they've held on to three of their seats, they've... They started off this year with five seats, they mm. lost one, they're down to four, then tonight they've lost another one, they're down to three, and of the three that they've got left, two of them have already announced their retirement, so mm. uh, I'm, I'm kind of glad I'm free of those kinds of politics and yeah. really just focus on simple things, mm. a war on poverty, feeding children, getting people simple jobs, and, and getting uh, the housing stock rebuilt again.